What's going on my Trainer Club? Today we are going to check out the Ho-Oh excellent throw tutorial in Pokemon Go to make sure you can catch as many Ho-Ohs as possible whenever you encounter it. Hopefully you get the shiny too. So welcome to the Trainer Club. Here we go! Welcome back everybody. Let me know in the comments below, have you gotten a shiny Ho-Oh in Pokemon Go? So I do know probably a lot of you guys already have this excellent throw tutorial down. However, I did film it a little while ago when Ho-Oh and Lugia did came back. So I figured for whoever does need it, this is a great time for you guys to get your hands on the excellent throw tutorial. So if you do want to see the counter guide, it's going to be up here or you can definitely check it out in the description below. So now without further ado, let's get into the excellent throw tutorial for the Ho-Oh every single time. So Ho-Oh circle, very big, pretty easy to hit, but you definitely want to time it up as much as possible to make sure that you guys maximize because it does have a shiny. And like I did say in my counter guide, if you guys do want to have Earthquake on it, you're going to need to use an Elite Charge TM. So now the 100% IVs, because we do want to know that, are going to be 2207 under every single condition except for two that are going to boost it because it's a fire and flying type Pokemon all the way to level 25 at 2759 under the sunny weather and the windy weather. So not only do you wanna know the 100% IVs, you also wanna know how to set up for the excellent throws every single time. So number one thing we do as always, we push our finger down on the dock to set the ball, meaning you're going to start pushing your finger, you're gonna watch the circle size from big to small, from big to small. You need to get comfortable with and see which throw size you do like the best. Do you like a big grate? Do you like a bigger grate? Do you like a smaller grate? Do you like a big excellent or a smaller excellent? Because each tick down, there are 10 different differentials. The circle goes, the easier the Pokemon is gonna to be to catch. That's why when you do see somebody like myself who has a really high, maybe 90% and above catch ratio for a raid boss, it's because of this pairing it with the berries, which I will put at the end of the video. Then, you, once you set the circle, you're going to let go of the ball. And then it's gonna be considered set. You do not touch the ball again until Ho-Oh is going to start attacking. Once Ho-Oh starts attacking, you're gonna have a window of opportunity. We're gonna to have to pick the ball up and either straight throw it or curve ball. Curve balls do help your chances, which are also gonna be at the end of the video. And then you're gonna release it before it's done attacking in the appropriate time frame. And if you do so properly, you'll be able to hit excellent throws every single time on Ho-Oh, which are gonna increase your chances. You're not gonna get your ball batted away. And you guys are going to have the best chances you possibly can get. And also, since Ho-Oh circle is very big, this is a great time to help you guys get excellent throws for your elite skills challenge that is active right now. If you guys do wanna see the tips, you can definitely check it out here. So now we are gonna get into the up close, the slow motion, the fast motion, and the circle highlights to make sure you guys know exactly how to release the ball every single time to hit excellent throws on Ho-Oh and Pokemon Go. Let's check it out right now. All right guys, here we go. Excellent throws on Ho-Oh every single time. I know that this is pretty self-explanatory, but every single time we always hold down the ball, we study the attacks, we see exactly what happens. Here's a slow motion of the attack. It's a little bit more of a drawn out attack and it's kind of difficult to predict when the Ho-Oh is finished attacking. So it's definitely something we want to study up. And then obviously when we are done, we go ahead and release. So there's the attack. And then this is about the biggest great throw that we can get. So do take note here of that throw and then getting a little bit smaller. This is about the smallest great throw that we can get. So each tick down that we go, like I said, is gonna be a little bit higher chances to catch the Ho-Oh. Now we have the biggest excellent throw. The excellent throw on the Ho-Oh is pretty relatively easy. And then here's about the smallest excellent throw that you can get. So Ho-Oh is going to start attacking and then we're gonna pick the ball up and throw it. So it does happen relatively fast. So let's slow motion it here in a second to start making it more feasible and more understandable for all you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and pick it up. We're gonna wind it. Like I said, the attack is a little bit longer than most of the legendaries and you really have to huck the ball up really high into the screen. It's almost as if there's like a wind tunnel on the top of the screen and you have to release the ball into that wind tunnel. So here we go. We're gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down, and then release. So typically, in the more recent legendaries, I haven't been doing as many spins, but this one does warrant for more spins just to make sure that I don't release it too early, which you can do and bounce the ball off of Ho-Oh's face. So this is gonna be the first top of the spin cycle that we're gonna do. Ho-Oh is coming straight at us. Definitely take note as Ho-Oh is doing his thing in the background and when I talk about the release. This is gonna be the down. So now we have another one coming all the way up and Ho-Oh is slowly making its way back towards the back of the screen where it's normally sitting. And then we're gonna go down 
And then we still have, as I was doing here, notice that I still need a little bit more time before I release it or I'm gonna throw it too early because Ho-Oh is so incredibly close to the screen, which is one of the challenges of hitting the excellent throws on the Ho-Oh being that it's so close. So we have the down, this is gonna be the wind up right before we're about to release. And then boom, look at where I release. It's like virtually in the center of the screen. It's gonna do a slightly curve. Notice the feet in the background. And then we release and then boom, I threw it all the way up into that wind tunnel and then it came all the way up there. So let's go ahead and see this one more time. Not all the way stopped, but definitely in slow motion as well. So we're gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down, and then release relatively in the center of the screen with a little bit of arc on that curve. So for anybody who wants to see it in fast motion and it does happen very fast. So you guys are definitely gonna have to get comfortable. One more time, fast motion, boom, that is crazy. So now I'm gonna reflect the screen to make sure that anybody that does wanna see this that is gonna throw clockwise can see the attack. So we have the up, the down, the up, the down, up, down, and then the release right there all the way up into the top of the screen and then boom, it hits it every single time. So a lot of you guys might be wondering why I throw it at the top. It's because it's more comfortable for me. When it's at the front, it's literally so close that I can't even hit the excellent throws and I don't feel comfortable. So guys, that's gonna do it. Make sure to take your time. If you do see a good one, 100% IV and 98% IV, the biggest thing that I see that hinders people is getting flustered and not knowing what you are doing because you are kind of jittery. You don't take a deep breath. Make sure to take that deep breath. Make sure to take yourself centered and then make sure to do exactly what you have been practicing and you know how to do every single time, which is spin that ball and throw the excellent throws. So with that said, we are now gonna transition into how do berries influence catching? Do the golden raspberries matter or can you use the red raspberries or can you use excellent throws? So let's check that out right now. We start at the very top with a normal throw, nothing onto it. It is a 2.17%. So I just wanted to make a quick note here that the pineapple berry is the exact same as using no berry because it does not have an increased catch rate bonus as do other berries. So the raspberry is a 1.5 times multiplier. The golden raspberry is a 2.5 times multiplier. And the silver pineapple, which is a newer berry, is a 1.8 times multiplier. So it is in between, not directly in between, but a little bit increased from a raspberry, definitely decreased from a golden raspberry but then you also get the double candy. So this is one thing that you may want to take into account. If you really don't like the Pokemon, you may want to go with a regular pineapple berry, but that's literally like using no berry. So if you did a normal with no curve, it's a 2%, but you can get it all the way up to a 6.67%, which is not all that good. However, the silver pineapple berry will bump you up. It is the better option, but note that you will be using a lot of silver pineapple berries on the legendaries. If we then add a berry, a raspberry, and let's say we were to do a great throw with a curveball, we now have 8%. However, if you notice, the top left is going to be the least percentage chance of catching it. All the way to the bottom right is gonna be the most chance. So the ultimate thing you can possibly do, that's why I teach you these excellent throws, is golden raspberry, curveball, excellent throw, because it's going to make the biggest difference. It's gonna go from a top left 2.17%, all the way to the bottom right of a 15.85%, almost 16%, which is absolutely mind-blowing the difference, because you do this every single time, I'm telling you. You guys think like, oh, I caught it on a bunk throw, like, but all the bunk throws, you're not always gonna catch it on. That could have just been like a glitch that like, hey, I didn't hit it, but I had a golden raspberry, right? I threw a curveball, so I'm at an 8.9%. That's pretty good compared to doing nothing with no berry at a 2.17%. So just with the golden raspberry and only a curveball, you're getting an 8.9%. But if you increase it and you add that extra 6%, which I would obviously recommend because that's why I make these videos. But if you do a raspberry with a curveball and an excellent throw, you are going to be at a 10%. But look at this, golden raspberry with a great throw. This is why I recommend great throws are better than not hitting any excellent throws because now you're at a 13% chance. It's only a 2% differential. And even if you just do a nice throw with a curveball and a golden raspberry, you're at 10%, which is higher than using a regular raspberry with an excellent throw. So it is absolutely crucial that golden raspberry and even hitting just a nice throw or a great throw or an excellent throw with that curveball. That's why if you want to check out how to throw a curveball video, you don't know how to do it, it really significantly helps out your chances. If you notice here, it's over a 50% increase when you are using that curveball. So that's pretty much gonna do it for you guys. Make sure to take your time, make sure to keep practicing. This is a great time to practice your excellent throws on a really big circle. I know, like I said, a lot of you guys have already 
already seen this, you guys already have this down. A lot of you guys have been out there, but for those who still need practice, I'm happy to produce this content to make sure that you guys know exactly what to do, especially on an easier, bigger circled raid boss. So thank you guys for tuning in, all my likers, commenters, subscribers, Patreon members, everybody who takes your support, subscription, and participation to the next level. I'm gonna see you guys out on the next video. Peace. I just want to take a moment and sincerely thank all of my Patreon members, everybody that has taken their subscription to the next level and chosen to support me on this platform. I greatly appreciate you guys as a growing channel and really trying to grow and improve as much as I possibly can. I really appreciate the extra support. You guys mean the absolute world to me. I cannot wait to connect with you soon and I appreciate you guys all for being a part of the Trainer Club. I will see you guys out on that next video.